AI is coming for your job. That's what every headline seems to be screaming these days. Intel laid off 24,000 people over a year. Microsoft cut 9,000 HP 2000. And they're all pointing to the same reason. AI is replacing jobs. But here's what I want to figure out. Is AI really replacing all these workers? Or is something else going on here? I've been digging into this and the story is way more complicated than what you're hearing on the news. Let me show you why everyone's freaking out. Wendy's is testing AI drive throughs CEOs are putting out their own predictions of the future. Dario Amade believes it could also lead to half of entry-level white-collar jobs disappearing in the next one to five years. They're warning about a jobless recovery where the economy grows, but the white-collar jobs don't come back. Even HR leaders are worried about this. The head of the largest HR organization says CEOs are now scared to hire people they might have to lay off again soon. So here's a story we keep hearing. AI automates boring stuff, people lose their jobs, and entire roles like customer support, data entry, and even design might start disappearing. Then I started asking, is that the full picture? Because when I looked deeper, I found that this narrative might be missing some pieces of the puzzle. There's actually a term for this. It's called technological unemployment, when machines or software replace human workers. And this is not new. ATMs replaced bank tellers, Robots took over assembly lines and software killed off lots of filing clerks and travel agents. Every time technology gets better, some jobs disappear. And that's really a simplified version of the full story. The International Labor Organization says around 2% of jobs globally are at high risk from Gen AI taking over. That's about 75 million jobs. And most of those are repetitive tasks in manufacturing or customer support or white collar jobs. But here's the thing. People said the same thing during the Industrial Revolution or when the computers first came out. When this circuit learns your job, what are you going to do? It's true that some jobs did go away because of computers, but new ones also showed up like software engineers, data scientists, product managers. None of these jobs existed back in the days before computers. So what makes this AI wave different? And more importantly, what's really driving all the layoffs in tech right now? And what does it mean for your future career? Something really interesting is happening in the CEO world. Remember when layoffs used to look bad? CEOs used to brag about having big teams. Look how many people we've hired. Look how fast we're scaling. That was the pitch for the investors because having a big headcount meant you were growing. And in tech, growth was everything. Alphabet nearly doubled its team to 75,000 people from 2013 to 2017. Zoom doubled headcount in 2022. Figma doubled staff and office space in 2023. Amazon was hiring 1,400 people a day. In the tech world, it used to be that big teams lead to large valuations. It was basically startup math. But now the culture is flipped. This LinkedIn post that I found kind of sums it up perfectly. It says 99% of startups brag about scaling headcount. Instead, they should be bragging about revenue per employee. And this is the new vibe, right? CEOs aren't proud of adding people anymore. They're proud of cutting them. And layoffs are now called operational efficiency. They say they're being lean. AI powered and investors are rewarding it. The smaller your team, the more disciplined you look. So forget about building empires. Today's badge of honor is showing you can do more with less. But here's the part that no one's talking about. And that's because this part isn't flashy. It's not about AI or viral tweets or even billionaires, but it does explain a lot. There's a recent tax change that's kind of hidden under the fine prints, but it's really impacting the tech companies and how they're hiring. According to this article I found, for almost 70 years, US companies could deduct 100% of their R&D costs, engineer salaries, product development, contractor payments. If it helped you build products, you could basically write it off immediately. That tax break was a huge reason companies like Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Facebook were able to grow so fast. It made innovation much cheaper and it rewarded keeping R&D teams here in the US. But in 2017, Trump's Tax Cut and Jobs Act change that. To make the overall bill look budget neutral, they included a delay provision that wouldn't take effect until 2022. So here's what changed. Before 2022, if companies spent money on research and development, things like 
building software or paying engineers or data scientists. They could deduct that full amount from taxes immediately. So if a startup spent $10 million on R&D in a year, they will get to subtract $10 million from their taxable income right away. And this is a huge deal. It made hiring engineers way cheaper because it's an expense. But under the new rule starting in 2022, Companies can't do this anymore. They have to amortize, which means to spread it over 5 to 15 years. This is huge because for tech companies, R&D isn't some side expense. It's the biggest portion of their spending. Now suddenly, hiring software engineers, data scientists, and product managers became way more expensive from a tax perspective. And right after this rule kicked in, tech layoffs started. This article points out that the timing is probably not a coincidence. But let's be clear, these companies are not struggling. They have money, a lot of it. Meta announced its year of efficiency right after posting strong earnings. Their stock is highest it's ever been right now. They're spending up to $72 billion this year on AI infrastructure. That's data centers, specialized hardware, and tens of thousands of GPUs. They're also paying huge salaries to top AI researchers because that's the talent war right now. Amazon's doing the same thing. They they cut 30,000 people, and a lot of those cuts came from Alexa and internal cloud tools, the exact types of projects that used to be 100% tax deductible. So they are mostly reallocating the money from people and towards AI talent and infrastructure and systems that will power AI, even though we don't actually know if this massive AI investment will pay off in the end. Everyone's betting big on AI because no one wants to be left behind. So where does this leave? the rest of us, especially people working in tech. I think there are two paths ahead. Path one is what everyone's afraid of. AI gets really good, really fast. It replaces huge chunks of the workforce and mass unemployment follows. This is the full dystopian scenario where most people will lose their jobs and never get them back. But there's also another path, the continuous adaptation theory. AI changes how we work, but it doesn't eliminate work completely. New jobs appear, old ones evolve, and people who know how to work with AI and set up against it will get a real advantage. I interviewed Marina recently. She's a great example of this. Before before tech, she used to work all kinds of jobs in jewelry store, at political nonprofits, then kind of accidentally fell into data science. Now she's a machine learning engineer at Twitch. I actually dropped out of high school at 16, got my first data science job from cold emailing. The rewards are definitely there if you put in the time and effort. This is a really great fulfilling career that pays you enough to live a good life and you get to work on engaging projects and constantly learning, you're never bored. So it's absolutely worth putting in that effort. Keep your spirits up for the long haul. At the end of the day, you just need one person to yes. say yes. Yeah, just need one. And to me, her story reflects what the future probably looks like for most of us. It's not about choosing one perfect career path and sticking with it forever. It's more about learning and pivoting when you need to and constantly adapting as the world changes around you. Here's what I think after looking at all of this. AI isn't taking every job, but it is definitely changing how work gets done. The layoffs we're seeing right now, yes, AI is part of the picture because AI tools do help us work more efficiently, but it's not the whole reason that we're seeing all these layoffs. Some of it comes down to tax changes, investor pressure, and CEO culture shifting. And I mentioned earlier that ILO, the International Labor Organization, says that 2% of global jobs or at risk from Gen AI. 2% can be a big number, but it's not apocalyptic. I keep getting questions like, is AI going to be too saturated? Should I do something more physical, like becoming a plumber? And sure, that can be a great path if you're into plumbing, but don't choose it just because you're scared of AI taking over jobs. So what should you do instead? Well, you wanna start learning how to use AI as a tool. Don't wait for your employer to retrain you. It's not really on them to train you. Take control yourself and start learning. Figure out what parts of your work are uniquely human. What parts could be automated or augmented? How can you effectively bring in AI tools into your workflow so that you can step up to doing more meaningful work? Because the future of work probably belongs to people who can work with AI and not the ones pretending it's not happening. If you want to know what type of careers will be thriving in the future, and what skills you will need to stay competitive, watch this video and I'll see you there.